in the screen image that you see is the map that was created by our student. This is a part of downtown Louisville known as the Sobro area or south of Broadway. You can see that she's done extensive mapping work and now what she's going to do is place the appropriate items such as a title, directional aerial, and so on onto the map. The first thing that she does is go over to the view menu and select layout view. That has got to be the first item that is done. If that item is not done, then you do not see any data. Now you can see the data is starting to draw. The pink items are buildings and so is the yellow items. You see the streets already laid out here and the map is being populated. So we'll let it finish its population and we'll go to the next step which will be adding a title to the map. It's just about finished populating. There's a few areas that have not been completed yet, which are the areas that just have widened, no buildings in. They weren't empty land. It's just areas that have not been completed. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the Insert menu. And the first thing we're going to choose is a title. And what do we want this title to be? We want this title to be a descriptive title so somebody seeing the map understands what the map is about. So let's see. South of, oops, let's get that, that a capital letter there, south of Broadway, based on 1905 Sanborn maps. And click OK. And the title is being generated. It's out, actually outside my map. I'm going to move it down a little bit so it's above my map. And so we have a title to the map. So let's go back to the insert menu. And we'll put a directional arrow on the map. You can choose any that you like. And you can see there's a whole group of them here. We'll select that one and click OK. Notice it puts it in the center of the map, and that's not really a good place for it. Let's put it down here near the bottom of the map. We can change the size by grabbing the handles and pulling it up or down. We'll just scroll up a little bit on our map. So we've got a title. Go back to the insert menu. You can see the map is being regenerated. We're going to go to the scale bar. There's lots of different choices. Scale bar, again, choose whatever is appropriate. If the map was not projected, we would not see the appropriate units here. Since this map is projected, we're OK. We'll say OK. Notice again, it puts the scale bar in the middle of the map. That's obviously not an appropriate place. Click on it, and we'll drag it to an appropriate place on the map. And maybe that might be the appropriate place in the map. <clears throat> So we now have a scale bar here. Then again, the map's not fully regenerated. That's OK. We'll go back to the Insert menu. And we need to put a title box in. So we're going to have a text box here. It'll also start regenerating the map again since we didn't let it regenerate before pro properly. You can see it's doing that regeneration. This is a very complex set of data. So sometimes you have to wait for data to regenerate. So we'll try to be patient here. The text area again is put right in the center of the map. That's obviously not where we want text to be. But to be able to really move this around, you've got to get a little text in there. So I'm going to type in the person's name. In this case, we'll just refer to the person as student. You can see the word text. There it is, student. I hit an enter.
Let's look at the text box. Grab the corner of it and we'll drag it over here to the corner. We could put a box around this if we wanted to. It's not required. I'm going to click in there so I can start editing again. There we go. Student, and we want the student's email address. And maybe a date. Put in there, you might have some other value added information, like what company you work for. Well, let's add this. We'll just come up to the student and we'll put KCTCS there. And we'll say OK. Take a moment, there it is generated. We can select it and we can drag it right into the corner that we'd like. And so now we have a text box here with our information. In. So we've added an arrow, we've added a scale, text box, and a title to the total map. The last thing that we need to add to this map to make it a publishable map is a legend. So we're, again, we're going to go back to Insert, click on Legend. And it's looking at what items do we put in here. Well, the study area should be in there. So there's cisterns showing, water lines are showing, buildings are showing, and streets. So those are okay. We'll accept those. Those are the ones that I had checked. Those are the layers that you're seeing. We need to give it a title. Legend is fine. I'll leave that as the title. We can change the border style. So let's see what we have as choices. Let's go with a medium sized border. And let's give this a little bit of a color. You know, make it a sand color. We won't shadow it and we'll just say next. We'll just keep moving forward here. We'll keep all these other groupings there. And now we have this huge title for legends, which is much too big for us to work with. So let's see if we can scale it back in size. That's a little bit bigger, better. Looks like we've got a little bit of room over here. If you remember, we accidentally moved the map before, so we can select the whole map, and we can actually slide the map a little bit if we need to. It looks like I'm going to need to make my legend a little smaller by grabbing the handles on that legend. Of course, we're doing a redraw here because of what I did. Also, we've got a quite a wide border on the side of our map. We can also change our border. Looks like in my movement, I've actually taken a little bit of map off the screen. Again, those can be adjusted as we need to. If you noticed also on the legend, we didn't have great names for it. Now I'll show you how to change some of those names in just a second. So you can see my legend is a little bit large. We're going to make it a little smaller here. There we go. Notice these have like Louisville, SDE, Sobro, so we're just going to come over here and I'm going to do a rename. I'm going to call that Sobro. Notice the name automatically changes my legend. I also made my legend a little bit smaller. We're going to change this one to be just Cistern. These were the default names. You can see I changed that one. Hit enter and it changes it. We we'll change this one just to be water lines. We're going to change this one to be buildings. That made a big difference on our size. And then you can see our sub name is construction type. We really should spell that out construction type. And finally, we have one called Streets. And now I can make my legend a little bit larger. Move it up a little bit, maybe. And you can see we've created a legend now for our map. So we have now completed the task of being ready to publish. Now we'd be able to put out some type of printing software 
are exporting it as a JPEG or maybe a PDF for other people to use. So we have completed the tasks that we were at hand, which was creating a map that is understandable by others. Now we have a legend, so we know what is going on in the map. We have who created the map situation. We have a directional arrow, which actually has moved uh, because I made a motion movement to the map. We'll pull that down. Okay. We got a scale. So you can see we're not talking about a big area. That's two tenths of a mile. And we got a title overall on the map. So we've now created a publishable map.